Well, the time to surrender has come and gone. And as of tonight, all 19 people charged in an alleged plot to overturn Georgia's 2020 presidential election have been through booking at the Fulton County Jail. And this sequence of events started nearly two weeks ago with D.A. Fonnie Willis announcing her indictment. And that big moment, of course, was happening last night, putting Georgia in the national spotlight once again. When former President Donald Trump touched down in Atlanta, he turned himself in to the Fulton County Jail, stayed inside for less than 17 minutes, and then he was gone again. And today, the historic mugshot, you see it right there, has been all over your screens. Tonight, we have live team coverage on what's going to happen next. We're going to kick things off with Doug Richards with the very latest on one co-defendant who, who has already turned himself in. Yes, all 19 turned themselves in, but there is one co-defendant named Harrison Floyd who is still in jail, the only one to not make bond. He was before a magistrate judge briefly this afternoon, and the judge indicated that Floyd may get another hearing as early as next week. All this after all the co-defendants finally turned themselves in, making that midday deadline. Uh, the last of them, uh, a man accused of uh, trying to intimidate a Fulton County election worker. When Donald Trump and some of his supporters touted election conspiracy theories in late 2020, Fulton County poll worker Ruby Freeman was a name they used a lot. Trevian Cudi and Stephen Cliffgard Lee, who turned themselves into jail today, allegedly visited Freeman at her home in an effort to get her to say she'd rigged the vote count. Freeman never did that. When he went to bed last night, he didn't. He thought he was going into custody. Lee's attorney, David Shostokas, says Lee had trouble raising money to post bond, but found a donor with ties to Trump. In addition, co-defendant Robert David Cheely, state senator Sean Still, Michael Roman, Jeffrey Clark, and former Coffee County election director Misty Hampton turned themselves in and posted bond earlier today. So all those folks out of jail, just the one co-defendant uh, who is still in jail, a man named Harrison Floyd, he will have more issues here at the jail upcoming, but the rest of the drama turns to various courthouses. Live at the Fulton County Jail, Doug Richards, 11 Alive News. We're just getting started here. Thank you so much, Doug. Well, while this was a whirlwind two weeks, there's still a very long legal road ahead. We've been following all of the new motions filed in this case just in the last few hours. 11 Alive's Joe Ripley has more on how they could impact the timing of this case. Arraignment is set for the week of September 4th. A judge typically reads out the charges each defendant faces and they plead guilty or not guilty. Before that phase begins, legal chess moves are already in motion. One defendant, Kenneth Chesbrough, opted for a speedy trial. The DA complied, moving up his trial date to October 23rd. This afternoon, former Trump attorney Sidney Powell filed a similar motion to move up her trial. Former Trump Chief of Staff Mark Meadows is working to move his trial from the Fulton County Courthouse to the U.S federal courthouse down the street here in downtown Atlanta. We will have a hearing on Monday to determine that fate. Emory University law professor Kate Levine says Meadows charges will still likely stick and moving his case wouldn't have much impact. Earlier today, former Coffee County Elections Director Kathy Latham asked for her case to move to federal court as well. The same state charges would exist. It just would be taking place in a federal courthouse with a federal judge and a jury that is drawn from the Northern District of Georgia, which is a broader geographical region than uh, what we see in, for Fulton County. After Meadows is hearing and defendants are later arraigned, prosecutors with the DA's office will turn over evidence, also known as discovery. Within the next two weeks earliest, and it will be a hard drive, it'll be terabytes of data, and it takes a minute for us lawyers to go through that. It is not easy. Criminal defense attorney Meg Strickler, who has no connection to the case, says a number of motions could follow after arraignment. Defendants could ask to be tried separately, suppress certain evidence, or ask for change of venue. In Atlanta, Joe Ripley, 11 Alive News. All right, and as Joe just said, there's still plenty more to come with this historic story. Follow along with what we can expect moving forward online right now at 11alive.com.